Hi, this is Neil Walker, Mets second baseman. You're listening to the Two Minute Timeout with Joe Shooter. This edition of the two-minute timeout is actually the two-minute timeout extra innings. As I spoke with Mets second baseman Neil Walker in January about several topics, Neil began the interview with an update of his rehab from season-ending back surgery last September. I am over four months removed from surgery, and I was out of rehab in two months, and really I'm, I'm doing my normal routine. And, you know, a lot of, like I said, a lot of core work, a lot of hip stretching and flexibility and mobility. So all those kind of things that when you're stuck in such a, a prone position or a fielding position and you're swinging a bat, you got to keep everything kind of strong around those muscles. You know, fortunately with the, with the surgery, uh, the doctor felt very confident that what we had done was really going to help me moving forward. And uh, obviously uh, it was hindering me for several years, and, and luckily that's behind me and, and we're moving forward and I don't have to worry about that for hopefully a long long time. Big news of course last year of becoming a father and how has becoming a father altered your perspective of baseball in your career do you think? Yeah it's, it's been great. Fortunately my wife Nikki and I on August 23rd of 16 were welcomed a little girl into the world Nora so it's certainly been a change of pace in the household. We've learned the stresses but also the very highs of being parents and the patience that goes along with parenting and it, it kind of makes the, the ups and downs of baseball seem very insignificant. So, you know, it's really been fun to, to watch her grow. Over these. Before you know it, she's going to be walking and talking and telling me all sorts of stories. I'm looking forward to the next several months because I know she's going to change so much. The trade for the Pirates certainly came as a shock to many fans. You know, you told me once in spring training that you realized it was a business when a guy who was in the locker next to you, the next day you come in, he's no longer there. That's one of those things that everybody has to get used to, but it is, once again, part of baseball and part of professional sports yeah it's it's uh you know it's never it's never easy every year when you come into spring training whether you're with a new team or with the same team and guys that you've played with in the past or befriended or whatever the case may be are no longer there and s some are more sentimental than others and, and you have to understand that unfortunately sometimes that kind of stuff happens and you got to keep moving forward and, and understand this game as a business obviously when, when you're in a place for so long like i was with pittsburgh and you came to new york that took a little bit more time to kind of adjust to that then bounce it from place to place so you, you feel fortunate to, to be in a, a major league locker room or wear, wear a major league jersey no matter where you're at. But you know certainly the personal aspects of the game of baseball, you, you never quite get used to. Are there ever times where you're on the field, just look around and say, this is a great life? Yeah, you really do. You never know, quite know when those are coming. And sometimes it's significant moments like playing against the guy that hit career milestones and kind of think to yourself, wow, you know, I, I'm so fortunate to play this game and, you know, get, to get paid to do so. And, you know, and so many guys that have come before you. And, and then there's also a situation like this past year we, we played in Miami and, and Jose Fernandez had, had passed away the day before we played a three game series against the Marlins. And, you know, you, you count your blessings every day and you, you feel very fortunate not just to be able to wear a major league uniform, but to be, you know, a health person on this earth and try to affect the game and to affect others in, in a positive aspect. Players say they love the game, but what is it about the game of baseball that's special for you? You played football, you played some basketball in high school. Why is baseball so special? I think it's such a, a chess game per se. I think especially as you move up and if you have the, the ability to play at the highest level, you realize that everybody's talent level is so very similar. And it's kind of those guys that grind the best and that mentally understand that it's such a tough game and, and you have to pay attention to the small details, both mentally and physically and on and off the field. And it's, it's unlike any other sport. And obviously it's not as physically demanding as, as many of the other professional sports. It's, it's a chess match every time you step in the box and or even in, in the field or for pitchers learning hitters tendencies and you just got to grind and you got to find ways to be to, to, to adapt year in year out and you know you find yourself thinking differently every single year when you go into a game and, and it's those that adapt and can play the game consistently at the highest level that make it that you know they have the longest careers a 300 hitter fails 70 percent of the time there really is no other sport where that happens a, a basketball player is not going to play very much if he only hits three out of ten shots did it take you a while to get used to the fact that there's days when you're going to be 0 for 4 and it looks like the ball is, looks like a golf ball and other times the ball is going to look like a beach ball. Yeah, you don't really get used to that. And, you know, a lot of times you have to remind yourself that when things aren't going great, it never it's never really as bad as it seems. And then on the other side of things, when things are going great, they're never really as great as they seem. And that's, that's why as a baseball player, you try to stay somewhere in between emotionally and mentally. So don't wear yourself down over the course of a long season. It's kind of always a challenge and you have to find ways to turn it off when you leave the field and don't take your work home. And you know, in situations like for myself, when you have a child and you have a little bit different perspective, it, it kind of does make those 
moments easier. You know, everybody wants to be a 300 hitter, but there's only a handful of those guys really every year that exist. Getting used to travel and rest. After I travel on a four or five hour plane trip, I feel like a zombie the next day. <laughs> you guys have to play at a major league level and no one's feeling bad for you. The pitcher's not saying, oh, this guy only got a couple hours sleep. Now, that's got to be difficult. And How did you get used to that? Yeah, you really have to you have to pay attention to your sleep patterns and delegate kind of the days that you may need more rest. And uh, sometimes you should go to the bar, ballpark a little later. Sometimes you need more rest. Usually early on in the season, you have a little bit more energy. And when July and August roll around, you kind of feel a little bit run down and you have to find those times when you need to shut it down a little bit more mentally or physically. Sometimes you don't take batting practice. The most important thing uh, really that I've found is getting quality rest and, you know, shutting your phone off for, until you wake up, whether that be 8.30, 9.30, 10.30 in the morning, whatever your sleep patterns kind of call for rest is so important over the course of a year and, and obviously take care of your body when you're at the field whether it's working out more working out less getting massages whatever the case may be you know you have to find those ways to make it over the, over the course of the season as we wrap up this interview looking at baseball and the future of baseball and whether it's uh, with replay rules changes if you were commissioner what would you do if people complain about how long baseball is football has the clock the average college football game is three hours in 15 20 minutes would you do anything yeah i mean it, it's hard to imagine putting a pitch clock on, on a baseball game and i think that's what makes baseball so special it also you know we understand that that's why the demographic of fans may be a little different than football or basketball or hockey for that matter so i don't know i, I think we certainly have done a pretty good job i think for the players you probably hear them talk about the travel and, and how to make things easier for players to keep so that your star players don't need as many days off over the course of the season. You know, speeding the game up certainly is a thing we talk about a lot and the commissioner's office likes to talk about, but, you know, it's, it's hard to do that. And, and a lot of players aren't really on board with that. Baseball players are better when things are slowed down and things are paced out. So but there, there are a few things that maybe could be tweaked as, as far as that's concerned. But I know if you ask the players, they'd want to find a way to make travel more efficient and make it so that players were a little more well-rested. And honestly, one of the ways you could do that is, is probably get away games or always days games so that you're getting whether you're getting home whether you're traveling home or traveling to another city you get in at a normal hour and obviously there's so many big tv deals and things like that that it's hard to do but i think you probably hear a lot of guys talking about that if you ask that same question finally you look back at all the years of playing baseball can you relate a funny or bizarre story <laughs> you know, I think this year, having a new experience in baseball and going to a new team and to new teammates and new, and new cities in spring training and during the season, it makes you appreciate, like like we were talking about in the game, but, you know, I got to play with Bartolo Colon, and it really puts the game of baseball in perspective because he's a guy, obviously, that doesn't look like your normal baseball player, but he knows how to get guys out, and uh, I can remember during the season this year, I was sitting in the sauna with him, and as you can imagine, sitting in a sauna with him with, with his shirt off is a pretty great sight to see and, and i just looked at him and i said man what's your secret how, how have you made it this far and he uh he said you know i don't take this game that serious he takes it seriously but he doesn't let it affect his day-to-day -day, uh life he comes to the ballpark with a good attitude he uses stretching bands a lot he's about, he's probably the most nimble and, and flexible guy that i that i've ever played with and you know he said he's enjoyed the game from the time he was 18 to the time he was 43 and, and you think to yourself uh, and i think to myself man if i had the ability to get to that age and still play the game at the level he's playing you know i feel really really uh, lucky so it was pretty fun and, and, and he's usually the, the source of a lot of conversations because he's he's uh you know <laughs> such a special talent at such a such a, a special age thank you neil for joining me once again best of luck to you all right i appreciate it joe have a great one